What's up everybody? I'm Morgan Crosby. Welcome to Cars at Crosby. I have an awesome episode for you today. We are going to be going through all the track components of the C8 Corvette, starting from launch control, performance traction management systems, and then also the competitive driving modes. This vehicle has such an amazing broadband, and I want to be able to show you how you can go from a street-specific setting to a track-specific setting in relative ease. If you've been watching along, you'll see that I already have some videos out on how to prepare your Corvette at a GM facility and also to protect the Corvette. Now we are getting to the part where we race it. I would like to consider myself a weekend warrior, meaning that I take my Corvette and commute and do all my daily activities in it. But then on the weekends when I want to have some fun, I want to make sure that I have the ability to take my Corvette to the track in a safe manner. And that's what I'm going to be showing you today. I want to make sure that if you are wanting to go out and have some spirited driving events, that you have all the tools on hand to be able to do that in a safe manner. So if you want to scroll back, watch some of the other videos where we were preparing it. Today we will go through some quick things that we have to set up at the track and then we'll go through all the different features and modes that we have here. I am at a World War II um, flight training school. It is a pretty amazing setting. We've got a very nice backdrop here uh, with one of the training aircraft that they would have used. Uh, this was in action from 1940 to 1944, training members of the Royal Canadian Air Force that were then shipped overseas uh, to uh, take part in World War II. A really amazing piece of aviation history uh, that we have right here on hand today. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, we're going to go into the track now and show you how to set up your vehicle when you arrive at the racetrack. Okay, we are at the track. We are going to be going through the initial setups when you arrive on the track now. Um, if you're doing active lapping, hot laps, autocross, endurance racing, any of these things, you want to make sure that right away, uh, this is the first thing you do when you get to the racetrack, just to make sure that everything is up to spec. Um, with this vehicle being such an exotic model, one of the things that I love that's so unique about it is the infotainment and the computer system that's inside of here is the top-notch system. This is the brand new system from General Motors called Global B. It helps out with the magnetic ride control, the performance traction management, but even further than that, inside of the vehicle, you have a very high-tech, up-to-date, infotainment system where I can access the owner's manual right from inside of the vehicle. In here are all the things that we've been learning about with the track preparation. Uh, there's the, the dual clutch transmission fluid, there's the brake process, and the last thing that we're going to be talking about now is when you get to the track, adjusting the tire pressure monitors so that you have the right tire pressure when you're on the track. On this vehicle, there is a section that goes over what type of PSI you want to have, and it also has kilopascals if you're in the metric system. So that's the next step that we're going to do. And then after that, we're going to go through the different types of systems that you have for electronic stability control, performance traction management, and also launch control. Okay, so the tires are at the correct PSI. I've gone through the owner's manual to make sure that all the track preparation has been done properly. I have my helmet ready to go. The top is off right now just so that we can see inside a little bit better, but I will put the top back on. Um, I just wanted to be able to show you the different modes that you have available to you inside the C8 Corvette. So without further ado, we're gonna get inside and I'm gonna go through um, all the different options that you have available to you. The first thing that you'll see is your driving mode selector right over here. And what I've done is I've linked my driving mode to the theme that you have in here. There's different themes that you have available um, for depending on which mode you're in. You can go into here and change the display design and you'll see that mine has been linked. So what that means is that when I turn it over here from touring uh, to sport mode, the entire demeanor of the vehicle is going to change uh, as including the heads up display. And then when I go to track mode as well, um, it changes the whole design layout. Now inside of these modes, it's very important to note that you can custom tune each specific mode for a, a number of different things. So just because you've changed it from sport to track means different things for different people once you've customized it. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into the settings menu and then you're gonna go to the top here where it says vehicle and you're gonna go into my mode and what you can do is change the exhaust, the steering response, the suspension dampening, your brake response is also allowed in there. And then in your Z mode, you even can change the powertrain mode that you're in from weather, track, to sport, or tour. So um, there's a lot of different capabilities and that touches upon, again, how broad the base, the base of use is with this vehicle. You can have a weekend warrior, a track cruiser, and all those things in between. Um, 
If you are looking to change the demeanor of the vehicle very quickly, it does have a very awesome mode that's on your steering wheel, and that is the Z mode. So if I was just along the highway in touring mode, and I was um, you know, just doing highway speeds and I wanted to overtake someone, I just press this and watch what happens. It sets up everything for what I have calibrated my Z mode to be. So in my Z mode, I have the track exhaust, I have track steering, so it's extremely nimble and responsive. Um, the suspension is in a track suspension, and then I also have it in track mode with track response. So basically, as aggressive as it can be uh, is my Z mode, uh, but you can customize it. For example, my my mode has exhaust in the track mode. I like a nice soft um, steering response for when I'm on the highway. I also like a very soft ride, uh, and then I want the sport mode, which is in the middle uh, for the brake response. So that is my custom mode for when I'm just driving around in a normal scenario. Um, one other big rule of thumb that I want to get across when you're shifting from one mode to the other is the more that you shift the Corvette's modes to the right and get more aggressive, the more you're on your own. There are a lot of systems on this vehicle that are meant to be able to keep the power down. And that's the beauty of it is there is a ton of different systems that are going to allow you to get the most out of this vehicle, regardless of what experience level you have. We have people from all walks of life that are going to get into this Corvette. And depending on how confident you are, this Corvette is going to immediately be able to customize itself to what you're uh, capable of doing and then also increase it as you get more uh, acclimated and customized with the vehicle. So uh, general rule of thumb, the more you twist it to the right, the more you're on your own. We call them kind of nannies. Those are things that are meant to keep you in the straight line uh, and putting the power down and enjoying the vehicle. Um, we, we have a lot of different systems on the vehicle that you can do that and to be able to go into even further modes once you're in the track mode you can press this traction control button twice it will then come up with the performance traction management system where we have a wet mode a dry mode a sport one a sport two and race now for legal reasons in any of these modes even though there is traction control still on you have to show that these buttons are off because these modes have been modified and they still actually have traction control systems, uh, the Highway Institute of Traffic Safety makes us um, leave these off at all times, even though there is still some systems on there. So don't be discouraged. Uh, if you are in Sport 1 or dry or wet, you still do have a lot of driving assist aids on the vehicle. Um, it's not until you're just in race mode where you are all on your own. So we're gonna work from the left all the way to the right again. Wet mode is a very similar mode to weather mode, but it's going to let you have a lot more fun with the rear end but again it's going to be on high alert looking for any excuse to be able to activate um, the driving assist aids dry mode pretty self-explanatory this is the uh, one that i would suggest that you go into if you were starting out for the first time in the um, advanced or intermediate driving setting sport one is going to allow the tail end of the vehicle to get out about 12 degrees it's going to start to give you some fun i would get about 100 to 200 hours of track use in Sport 1 before I moved up to Sport 2. Uh, Sport 2 is going to allow you to have about a 30 to 35 degree uh, rear end um, play. So what I mean by that is the, the VET is going to allow you to have more fun with the rear end. It's going to allow you to get a little bit more sideways before it starts to correct you and bring you back in. So all of these are increasing your confidence threshold and your, and your, uh, and your abilities on the track. And then finally, we have the race mode. Um, that is where you're all on your own and it's going to basically do... Um, uh, nothing to really assist you in, in driving this vehicle. Now, um, I'm going to be mounting this up on here and I'm going to start going through uh, the launch control settings. I don't want to have my phone on me when I'm doing that, uh, but that is the brief uh, run through on how you can access the different modes uh, for performance traction management and then even just changing the modes if you were wanting to do some spirited driving outside of this. Okay, so I've got my seatbelt on, I've got the top back on. We're gonna go through a couple of things, but before I do that, keep in mind, I'm on a runway right now. This is a closed circuit. I'm not doing this in any public roads. We're gonna be doing a lot of spirited driving. It's just not safe to do it any means on the regular roads. Um, first asset or tool that I have with this new system is the PDR recorder has been upgraded. It's a lot faster. Um, I have nice overlays that I can shoot a lot of different information on. I can even customize the tracks in here and learn a custom track like we're gonna be doing today and set the start finish line wherever I like. Um, I'll show you what some of the recordings look like. In here. Gears, braking, and throttle input, your speed, steering.
measuring input down here. Uh, this is your tachometer and then even a g-force meter. It shows you your distance traveled. Uh, really amazing stuff. You can even get lap times inside of here. That sound is just remarkable. It records in the cabin and on the outside as well. Um, on top of the PDR mode, we have um, the launch control. This is what everybody is talking about. Um, with the amount of uh, data that this thing can take in, it also can process it exceptionally fast with that new Global B architecture. The performance data management system and also launch control are just making this uh, vehicle have such an, an amazing capability to throw down the power again and again without even trying and beating a lot of things that have a lot more horsepower than it. So without further ado, um, you're gonna pick it into either track mode or sport mode. You're gonna double tap the traction control button and your menu will come up here to tell you uh, what type of mode you wanna be in. I'm gonna be in race mode for mine. I don't want any assist in any way. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna place your foot hard on the brake and you're gonna hit the throttle. And what you're gonna notice is that the tachometer is gonna kinda hunker around until it levels in in a certain area. What the vet is doing is it's taking a ton of different data. It's looking at barometric pressure, temperature, uh, incline, a lot of different things, your tire pressures, all that kind of stuff is being processed so that it can be able to put down the, da the, the power as fast as possible on the road. Um, it's just absolutely remarkable to think that this thing uh, can do 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. Uh, that is just an amazing uh, statistic for a base entry level vehicle to come out with. Um, so without further ado, let's show you what that can do. So hard on the brake, let it hunker in, let go. It is amazing. The first time I tried that I had sunglasses on and my sunglasses launched right off into the back. Uh, another nice thing with this vehicle is it does come with a 0 to 60 timer. Uh, being in Canada right now, it's called the 0 to 100 timer, and that is in your bottom right corner of the interface over here. So when you're getting up to the line, all you need to do is come to a complete stop, and it will start as soon as you start accelerating. So one more time, hard on the brakes, let it hunker in, and then release. There's a lot of different factors. This is a retired airfield, so there's a lot of gravel on the road. I hope you guys enjoyed that content. We're going to get out of the track very soon. Okay, we are now on the track. I have got it in track mode. I've also acted the performance traction management system. I have it in Sport 1, which is where you are going to be if you're a beginner. Um, it's going to let you have a little bit of fun, but it's not going to let your tail end um, and also the traction to get too out of control. Um, again, to do a track start, you're going to, or to do launch control, you're going to put your foot hard on the brakes, you're going to let the tachometer kind of level out, and then you're going to go. As you have more experience, maybe about 50 to 100 hours of track use, I would start using Sport 2. And in, if you wanted to get even more um, advanced, then you can get into the race mode after you have maybe about 100 to 150 hours uh, with your Corvette. So without further ado, I'm going to take it onto the track. There are a lot of amazing things that you have as a benefit with a Corvette, and that is the dual clutch transmission. Um, this new Squircle, the square circle steering wheel, is allowing it for you to be able to do uh, really nice uh, shifts and turns very easily, as you can see. Um, one of the things that I like most about a Corvette is you have a lot of control over it. So you're not noticing that I'm constantly correcting it when I'm going around a, a, a big gradual corner. These are the types of corners that help out with having that dry sump system. The dry sump system makes it so that if the fluid is all going on one side, you're not gonna have it sloshing around and starving the engine. Um, just an amazing amount of power that you can get in the straight line there. Um, I love it. Uh, right now, I think we're still in Sport 1, so I'm going to transfer it over to Sport 2 now, which is going to allow me to have a little bit more fun in the rear end. Uh, another thing that I want to point out is, is that when you purchase one of these Corvettes from me, one of the things that's included with all Corvette purchases is a driving academy class through Ron Fellows. Now, Ron Fellows is a Canadian racing driver that played, raced in Le Mans. Uh, he's royalty amongst GM Performance, uh, and he is uh, the owner of a racetrack in Pahrump, Nevada. It's 66 miles outside of Las Vegas, where if you purchase one of these Corvettes within one year of the purchase, 
you are going to spend three nights, two days there learning everything there is to know about the Corvette. Uh, defensive driving, what to do if you lose control in a scenario like that, and then you're also going to be doing a lot of tracking as well. The nice thing is, is that they take your VIN number and they tell you exactly, or they give you exactly what you have uh, for your vehicle in terms of spec uh, at there. If you have a convertible, they'll be giving you the coupe version. Um, and it's only a thousand dollars American to do this. So for about sixteen hundred dollars Canadian or a thousand American, uh, you can go down there and get the ultimate track performance experience with your brand new Corvette. And also for an additional two hundred dollars American, you can have a significant other or a spouse come with you and experience everything that there is to do about the Corvette. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm definitely enjoying myself right now going around the track. I'm going to put it in a track mode. If you want to stay tuned for more, I will upload some of the footage from the PDR on here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Stay tuned for more and happy motoring.